Good morning. Blessed New Year, IRM Lloyd Minster. It has been a while that we do not see each other. But I am happy again for this opportunity uh, to share to you the Word of God. We have survived 2020. Uh, to others, it was a year of blessings, year of answered prayer, year of God's faithfulness, God's healing, God's uh, provisions. But to some, it was a year of trials. It was a year of survival. And it was a year of trying times. Nevertheless, whatever our experience from the last year, we need to be grateful for our Lord is kind and faithful towards His promises on us. And now, we have a new year. We have a new hope and nothing is changed. We have the same God who will go with us on our journey this year. Whatever it was from the past and whatever will be in the future, we will live today in His grace. I want to share to you a, a movie, a quotation from the movie uh, Kung Fu Fanda. It says, Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. But today is a gift. That is why it is called present. Yes, leave our past behind. Face tomorrow with excitement and live today with contentment and grateful heart. Let us read Psalms 42, verse 1 to 4. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. While men say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Where do we find our, our strength? Where is that special place that gives us courage to start a new year? According to Charles Swindoll from his book, Finishing Touch, we have what we call rallying point. Rallying point, rallying point according to his book, uh, it was de defined by Webster in verb. To rally, it means to master for a common purpose, to arouse for action, to come together again, to renew an effort. Uh, when it is used as a noun, rallying points a mastering of scattered forces to renew an effort, a summoning of strength or, or courage. There is a place where we can go back and renew our strength, a place or a situation which recharges us so that we could start again with, with new strength, with new energy to fulfill our, 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 our purpose. Let us go back to the scripture and discover how the people of God uh, renew their strength as they face a new challenge a new situation into their life. God's people and their rallying points to regain their strength. Abraham, for Abraham, it was Bethel, the place of the altar where he met uh, his God. Moses, it was the burning bush in the desert where God spoke to him and gave him direction how to uh, lead his people out of Egypt. Hebrew, or the Jewish people, wrote to Canaan, to the land of promise, the tabernacle, 
It was the tabernacle or the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night and many more, many more. Jews, the Israelites in the time of Joah, it was Gilgal. After defeating their enemies, they gathered to this place to plan for the next campaign. For Jesus, it was early in the morning where he met his God, where he uh, prayed, where he calls God to renew his strength and ask for his direction. The disciple, during the time of Christ, it was Jerusalem where they were endowed with the Holy Spirit. How about you? Where do you find your strength? Where you can find to renew your strength so that you can continue your journey and to start your journey this year. The psalmist said he longs for God as a deer pants for fresh waters, streams of water. Then he remembered when he longs for God, when he wants the power of God, when he wants to, he wanted to renew his strength. In verse 4, it says, These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the Gentiles, among the festive throng. When he longs for God, according to the psalmist, he remembered his task in the temple. He remembered his regular activities. He remembered how he joined the, the multitudes doing their procession, leading to the temple of the house of God. Nakaalala niya lahat yung kanyang ginawa na pagsamba sa ating Panginoon. Papaano niya naranasan yung presensya ng Diyos sa kanyang buhay sa panahon na siya'y nalulungkot. At ang sabi niya, kung papaano aking kaluluwa ay nalulungkot. Sa tubig, gaya ng tupa na, nalul, na kailangan, na uuhaw sa tubig, gayon din ang aking espiritu ay nalulungkot at minanasa ang presensya ng Panginoon. Where do you find your strength? Where do we find our strength to continue our day, to continue our week, a year that is before us? Where is your rallying point? To, to be encouraged, to regain enough strength to start again. Great men of God return to their basics. Great men of God return to their rallying point so that they can experience God's blessings, God's strength towards their lives. Ang mga dakilang tao ng Diyos ay bumabalik kusa sila naranasan, kusa nila naranasan ang kalakasan at ang panibagong sigla sa paglilingkod sa ating Panginoon. You always hear these words from me. Actually, uh, there is no strategy. There will be no teaching. There will no perfect teaching that I'm going to share to you. But let us just back to square one. Where where can you find your strength? Kapag nangihina ka na, when you feel uh, weak, you need to go back, back to square one. Firstly, our personal devotion, our personal time with our God. Psalms chapter 5, verse 3. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. According to the psalmist, in the morning, he gave his request to God. Same as true, in the morning, we give our request to God. We can give our request to God. It is the best time of the day of the day uh, to give our request for that day so that we have enough strength to face that day. Before we start our day, we need to commit to Him everything that we are going to do. Psalm 39, verse 16. But I will sing of your strength in the morning. I will sing of your love, for you are my fortress, 
my refuge in times of trouble. In the morning, we sing songs of praises to Him, to His name. It is the time of, to praise God, to celebrate Him with songs of praises. Masarap umawit sa Panginoon tuwing umaga. Ito po ay nagbibigay lakas sa atin, nagbibigay kaligayahan sa, sa atin God. But at the same time, ito ay nagbibigay kalakasan sa bawat isa sa atin. So, praise God in the morning. Kesa po magalit tayo, mainis tayo tuwing umaga, bakit hindi natin siya pasalamatan? Psalms 90 verse 14 Satisfies us, satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Mga kapatid, sa umaga, in the morning, He will sustain us with His love and new strength. It is enough, it is enough, enough strength to sustain us that day para masigla tayo sa maghapon na gagawain natin. So, approach Him, praise Him, sing songs of praises in the morning before you go outside to face your another day. Kaya minsan tayo nangihina eh. That's why we are weak and because we do not have enough strength. Actually, what we do need is spiritual strength. We need encouragement. We need the Word of God to strengthen us. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Even Jesus, it is his uh, cost costume. It is his habit to, to pray early in the morning. Kung si Jesus na nanalangin tuwing umaga, how much more na tayo pa? Luke chapter 6, verse 12 to 14. One of those days, Jesus went out to a, to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated Apostles, even Jesus Christ, He recharged. Nagkahanap din po siya ng lakas tayong umaga. And that is to have personal communion with His Father. Before before Jesus um, made, made significant decisions into His life, He will spend more time in prayer and ask, for His Father's guidance. Ito maganda kay Jesus, bago siya gumawa ng decision. And dapat tayo din, humingi tayo ng direction, tumawag tayo sa Diyos, at humingi tayo ng paggabay sa Kanya. It is the best time in the morning to start our day with prayer, with reading His words, the scriptures. Let us acknowledge Him in every decision that we are going to make every work that we are going to take and have a thankful heart for the new day that is that he is going to give us this is our rallying point let's go back to the to the basic to the square one we need to spend time more with god in prayer in songs of praises and asking him ask him for his guidance through his words According to one quotation, it says, To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. According to Martin Luther, It is, impos it is impossible for, for a man to, to live without breathing, without an air. Likewise, for a Christian, it is impossible to live without prayer. Uh, a week without prayer, ito rin po ay magiging weak Christian. Kapag po tayong hindi na nalangin ng isang linggo, ito rin po magiging dahilan para tayo ay magkaroon ng kahinaan. 
Back to square one, our personal devotion. Secondly, our worship. Psalm 74 verse 10. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Mga kapatid, dear brethren, brothers and sisters, no better place to stay than in the house of the Lord. Wherever we go, we will return and long for the house of the Lord. Hahanap-hanapin pa rin natin yung pagsamba natin, yung pagpupuri natin sa ating Panginoon. Psalm 22 verse 1, I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So the psalmist, the author of this song, said he was glad when he heard that the people of God is ready, when the people of God longed for, when the people of God is enthusiastic, going into the house of God. Are you excited? Excited pa ho ba tayo na pumunta sa church? sa ating pagsamba, sa ating Panginoon, even in this uh, trying times, even in this pandemic that we have. Psalms 10, verse 24, 25. And let us consider how we may spar one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. The church of God is the place where we can steer one another. It is a place where we can encourage one another and worship our God. Let us be thankful. I am Lord Mister, mga kapatid, uh, be thankful because the Lord has given us, has given you, an opportunity to gather together to worship the Lord our God. Sa iba, dito po sa Edmonton, uh, sa amin sa Edmonton, hindi pa po namin ito nagagawa. Uh, online service pa rin po kami. So, this opportunity that the Lord that the Lord has uh, gave us, make every opportunity fruitful and meaningful and enjoy the presence of God. However, yes, we have families. We have uh, we have families and possibly uh, children. They were not able to go to the church this morning because of the some uh, regulations guidelines. Wherever we can, well, wherever we are. We can worship our God and we should enjoy His presence by praying, participate in the singing and listening to the words of God. So even you are here now, even if you are here now and then to those who are in their uh, home, enjoy the presence of God as you listen to this message, as you listen to the songs, participate in the song, participate in the singings, uh, sing praises to God and let let His presence fill you. Let His anointing fill you. And enjoy as we sing songs of praises. Let us uh, lift up the name of the Lord. And let His Holy Spirit, let His Spirit fill us as we worship Him. Nothing can replace the worship of God. This is the privilege, privilege that we have. Ito po yung pinakamasarap. Uh, this is the best time to enjoy the presence and the fellowship of God. When you are down, when you are weak, worship of God. Uh, when you do not feel to worship Him, so much so, you need to worship Him. And when the heaven is shut down, when seemingly you haven't received your your prayer, uh, answer to your prayer, pray to God. And when we are in abundance, when we are uh, when when blessings of God pours out, 
force out on us? Praise the Lord. Purihin mo pa rin ang ating Panginoon. Every day, wherever you are, you can worship our God. So, where you can find your strength, your personal devotion, and then your personal worship, and then go to the Church of God. Go to the house of God to worship Him together with the families of God. According to Chris Tomlin, worship where God isn't moved by quality of our voice, but by the conditions of our hearts. Every time we worship, wherever you are, whatever your situation is, God looks into our hearts. If we give Him importance, if we are enthusiastic, if, if we are excited to worship Him. Thirdly, our giving. Genesis chapter 4, verse 2 to verse 5. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborns of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. When we give to the Lord, we give not because of something that we have, but what the Lord, on what the Lord requires on us. Cain was a farmer and he offered fruits of the soil or the fruit. It was the fruit of his labor. While Abel, Abel has offered his flock, uh, God has favored Abel's offerings because he gave which gave honor to God. When we give, we give what favors to the Lord. We give not what on what is left to us, but what gives glory to our God. Let us check our heart. Let us check our attitude on, on giving. Why do we give? What do we give? And how we give? Uh, do I give because I want to give it? Or I have something left to me? So whatever what is left, then I will give it to God. Or it is priority. It is one of the priorities that I need to do. Um, what's your attitude? Do you give with a cheerful heart? Do you give uh, because from your heart, you want to give honor to God with the gift that you're offering to Him? Giving is, actually giving is a basic attitude. Basic lang po siya. Uh, basic responsibility of a true believer of God. If you consider yourself as a child of God, this is one of the basics that you need to do. So as I told you before, um, where, is your, where you can find your strength. Yes, we need to be faithful with our personal devotion. Yes, we need to be faithful with our worship to God. But still, we need to be faithful with our, with our giving. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1 to 6. Verse 1, And now, brothers, we want you to know uh, about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in the service to the saints. And they did not do as what accepted, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then to us in keeping with God's 
will. Mga kapatid, we need to be faithful in our giving. Do not be misled. And this is the temptation. Sometimes, because we are busy, busy uh, ministering to God with our talents, with the skills that we have, and possibly we are one of the leaders of the church. But if we are not faithful with our giving, our service to God is not complete. Again, giving is vital in our spirituality. It is one of the basics attitudes of being gratitude so all that the lord has given us magkakaroon ka lamang ng reason na hindi maghandog sa Diyos kung ikaw ay hindi nakakatanggap ng pagpapala sa ating Diyos you only have the reason not to give. The only reason that you can say that I will not give to the Lord if you do not receive blessings from the Lord. But even in difficulties, even in our needs, even in these trying times, much more we need to give. For the Macedonian believers, out of most severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Mahirap din po sila. Nangailangan din po sila. Wala rin po silang trabaho. Umaasa lang din po sila sa EI. Sa CERD. Pero nakakaya pa rin po nilang magkaloob sa ating Panginoon. What's the secret? Their secret? But, verse 5. But they gave themselves first to the Lord and then to us in keeping with God's will. This is the reason behind. We need to give ourselves to the Lord. If you give yourself to the Lord wholeheartedly, giving is not an issue for you or for us. Actually, in reality, we cannot outgive God. Amen? We cannot outgive God. The more we are generous in, in giving, the more we will experience His blessings. Give your tenth. Then God will give you His hundred. That's it. At napatunayan ko na po yan. I want to share to you a quotation. We need more than he needs we need more about him we need more his blessings than he needs our okay rings mga kapatid actually hindi naman magpapayaman sa Diyos ang ating pagkakaloob actually pag nagkaroon tayo tayo ang payayamanin ng ating Panginoon Amen Amen we have survived year 2020 and now we have already started our 20, year 2021 so let us do our personal devotion a bible our bible reading let us give time uh in our worship even in our home or at the church and let us be faithful with our giving and lastly obedience first samuel chapter 15 verse 22 but Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in birth offerings and sacrifices as much in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the path of rams. Whatever we have heard, whatever we learned from his words, whatever uh we gave as an offering whatever we sang uh, in worship but without obedience to his words without obedience to his commandments everything is nothing wala pong lahat silbi yon because obedience to his command is better than 
sacrifice. Psalms 119, verse 57, verse 260. You are my portion, O Lord. I have promised to obey your words. I have sought your face with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promises. Your promise. I have considered my ways. I have turned my steps to your statutes. I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands. Uh, importante pagsunod sa Panginoon. At ang pagsunod sa Panginoon ay hindi siya hindi siya option. Siya hindi siya option. Uh, ito ay pribilehyo na binibigay sa atin ng Panginoon. Uh, and our, our obedience uh, should be hasty, nagmamadali, and not with delay. No one prays to God and who does not want to, to receive His answer uh, immediately. And all of us, we pray. And all of us want an instant answer. So much so, uh, in our obedience to God, do not delay. Uh, let's hasten. Dapat nagmamadali tayo sa pagsunod sa ating Panginoon. And partial obedience is disobedience. Same as a delayed obedience is disobedience. So, let us commit ourselves to obey Him wholeheartedly. Uh, this year, this year, that is before us, 2021, uh, possibly, uh, we are not certain actually what will happen. Uh, when will this pandemic end? When will uh, our life uh, back to normal? But we are sure, we are sure, we are certain that we have the promises of God. We have the strength of God. We have the word of God. And we have an assurance that He will guide. He will guide our ways. He will guide our journey to finish it according to His purpose and will. Our God holds the future. So we are certain, we are certain, if we obey His words, we are certain that we will reach our destiny according to His plan. Second Chronicles chapter 31, verse 20 to 21. This is what Hezekiah did throughout Judah, doing what was good and right and faithful before the Lord his God. Verse 21, in everything that he undertook in the service of God's temple and in obedience to the law and the commands, he saw his God and worked wholeheartedly Last praise. And so, he prospered. The key to King Hezekiah's success was obedience to the word of God. He sought the Lord who heartedly. And the result, he prospered. You want to be, you want to prosper in everything you do. Serve the Lord wholeheartedly. You want to prosper. You need to finish well this year. Uh, then do what do what is right. Do what is good, and be faithful to the Lord our God. As I said before, we know we do not know the future, but we do know who holds the future, and that's enough. What we do not know when. Will this pandemic end? But we do know that God is in control. What we need to do is to obey His command, trust His way, that He will bring us to the end of this year according to His promise and according to His purpose. The journey, the, the road, might not be straight straight the 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 journey our journey might not be uh, what we call this uh joyful or 
full of surprises and sometimes we need to cry and we need someone to lean on and help us finish this journey but again our God who holds the future will bring us to the end and after this year 2021 all of us will sing praises and glory to God because he is faithful enough to guide us and bring it bring us to the end according to quotations the child of God must be completely obedient to the word of the Lord the driver on the highway is safe not when he reads the sign but when he obeys them possibly we know the signs we know the the, the guidelines but if we do not follow those guidelines we will not be saved same is true we might learn we might uh read we might uh, memorize the whole scriptures but without obeying them without obeying them it is not complete obedience to our god we will not be saved and we will not enjoy his blessings secondly great moves of god are usually preceded by simple acts of obedience you want to experience god's miracle you want to experience god's provisions this year even uh during this pandemic obey him obey him as we have started our, our our new year it gives us new hope and new strength but again but again uh, we are reminded that we need to go back to our rallying point we need to go back with the basic do your personal devotions and have a fellowship with our god with the lord regularly regularly secondly um worship him worship him feel his presence enjoy his presence give glory to god and then give our offerings give give your gifts to god faithfully and lastly do what's good do what is right obey his word and serve him wholeheartedly then we are sure that he who holds the future will be with us and bring us to the end of this year with a grateful heart with thanksgiving we will enjoy his presence and his enduring love towards us let us bow our heads and let's pray heavenly father we want to thank you for the year 2020 we are grateful because you did not lead uh you did not leave us especially those difficult times that we have thank you for the healing lord thank you for your protection and for sustaining us during our uh, financial crisis lord and now lord as we start this year we are committing everything to you lord we commit to you our plans and the desires of our hearts lord uh, let this happen let this be fulfilled according to your will uh, lord give us a listening heart so that we could hear your voice through your words and so that we can follow your will make us obedient and faithful O oh lord to everything that you have entrusted us bless your name O oh god we want to exalt your name, O oh Lord. And then, Lord, let your blessing be upon us. All this we pray 
In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Good morning and God bless you all.